should be good. Okay, great. Thanks everyone for joining us. Sorry for the delay. We had some interesting technical difficulties uh, that Maya and I just worked free, worked through. But thank you for your time this morning. And the goal of you know this morning's um, short Facebook Live is to really walk you through how to do a paleo reset successfully. So I'm going to go over you know a little bit of the nuts and bolts on you know what paleo is, what some of the health benefits are, and you know how to how to get through it. Um, and then Maya is really going to do a great job telling us like what you know on. The the habit and behavior end, what you, what strategies you can use to get not only get through the reset successfully, but to really, you know, maintain a healthy eating plan afterwards. So if the, for those of you that don't know Maya, um, Maya is a registered dietitian and health coach with um, Nuaria, and she is the um, owner and founder of the Habit and Behavior Change um, Curriculum and Health Coaching Program that we work with here at Arizona Wellness Medicine. Uh, <clears throat> so Welcome, Maya. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is fun. I love doing these with you. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Our last one was really, uh, really successful and, and yeah. fun too. So um, cool. So I'm going to dive right in since, you know, we're getting started a little bit late. Um, so paleo, to go back to explain really what paleo is. Um, and the reason that I have my patients use paleo um, is twofold. One, paleo is an anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense, food plan. So it really is just a great healthy eating plan. But the purpose of doing the 30 day reset is really more than just healthy eating. For my patients on the clinical side, it also double backs as an elimination food plan, meaning it eliminates certain food groups that are well known to be in triggers for symptoms in patients' health. So, and that's the only time that I ever ask patients to be 100% strict is for that 30 days. And it's for a very scientific reason, right? So it's because it takes the body's immune system 23 days to calm down by only half if it's responding to a food. So 30 days gets you well past that halfway point to where if on the back end, and we'll get to this in a minute, when we do do food reintroductions, it's very obvious you can tell that that food was creating a symptom. So I hope that makes kind of sense to everyone as far as the science behind it. Um, and you know, for a quick review, up to 80% of your immune system is located inside the gut, which is why, you know, what we put into our gut, what we, the food we feed ourselves makes such a huge impact on our health. So, and I know Maya as a registered dietitian, you know, all about paleo and you know how to implement it. And you've been working with my patients anyway. So, you know, you're, you're very well versed on, on all of that. I know this. Um, yeah. Paleo is a good, a good elimination. Absolutely. So, and for those of you out there, um, you know, uh, Maya, and we'll get to this at the end again too, but she has been helping um, my patients, you know, with their overall health plans. But um, it, if you're struggling, if you haven't done a 30 day paleo reset yet, or you need to redo it, or you, your eating got off track, um, you know, over the holidays or whatever the reasoning is, um, Maya uh, does have health coaching programs, three months, six months, and 12 months to help you get back on track. The three month health coaching program would be perfect to get you through the paleo reset onto the other side to make sure you're maintaining those those um, healthy habits is that pretty correct absolutely yeah you mean for the for going using the 30-day paleo challenge yes absolutely so yeah and it's uh and I found um like we already noticed for everyone listening of course there's always there's always kind of two kinds of people right I'm falling into this bucket in my past history but someone um we know that the 30-day paleo reset challenge like this is just something that needs to happen for the health it's very it is what it is. And so somebody can just go and do it off. They're on their way. You don't need us. That's great. Then there's this other group over here that we know what to do. We're just not doing it. Or uh, you tell us that we can't have any bread or chocolate or beer. And that's the first thing that we want all of. So <laughs> very all or nothing kind of thinking. And so it's really, this is the category that is um, very important because we, we do really need a crossroad at this point because um, there are certain things that have to be done for your health in order to get healthier, in order to return back to full and complete health. One of those probably being, I need to get some stuff out of my diet, but at the same time, when we match that with a habit of all or nothing thinking, it can be a little, I don't want to say dangerous. It's going to make the challenge, um, uh, something that is bigger than it's, than it really is. Uh, our mind just makes it up to be something bigger than it really is. So uh, awesome. what we could do and come in, of course, what we have been doing for the for the 30 day reset is 
we'll set you up. It's it's 30 days, it's not the rest of your life, obviously. And um, we'll set you up in terms of um, what meal plan and, and not an actual meal plan, but like, what are you going to do? What are you going to cook? How's breakfast, lunch, and dinner going to look? How's it going to be different? What, what potential dangerous situations are you going to fall into, such as like work lunches or um, dinners out and things like that? Those have to be strategized in advance to really be successful. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the most important piece, that's, that's easy. And then the most important piece is afterwards. The reason that you'd want to honestly come see us for uh, a three-month package with the Paleo Reset Challenge is afterwards, uh, so in, in habit and behavior change, when we go to change a habit, a physical habit and behavior, there are five steps. And most people, um, uh, we use willpower unstrategically. We think that it's a habit we should be able to cultivate, rather it's more of a muscle. And if we don't use the muscle correctly, we'll use it up and we'll get tired. So it's like changing 998 things about my life and falling into chocolate cake by Friday because we haven't used that willpower strategically. Okay. So what happens with a, a reset in a really cool way is, uh, and it's it's not good nor bad, it just is. Uh, I certainly tell a lot of um, our patients and clients, you have to make sure you have to have a really good inventory of where it is that you're at, where you need to move forward, and where your head's at in the game. It's going to be really important to take that mental inventory first, but we use these stepping stone routines to get from here's where I'm at now and here's where I want to be. So what happens is in most challenges, uh, in most um, kickoffs and anything along these lines is um, most of us will jump right to where it is that we want to be, right? The end game goal would be more of a paleo-ish diet. Now, again, not right nor wrong, what happens is we've skipped the stepping stones to get really to hone in and get um, stricter on the diet to start feeling better immediately. But what happens afterwards is instead of staying here, we have to reintroduce some stepping stones back here. The cool thing is, is that you haven't been, uh, you were able to skip these. So now instead of staying at the ideal, we just, we bring you back to a few different stepping stones in terms of Sometimes it's, uh, to give you an example, it's like allowances, right? So if you've done paleo and you're missing bread or uh, alcohol or whatever that is, then we set in little allowance stepping stones that say, okay, over the weekend, uh, you're going to have two drinks on the weekend or is something where it's an allowance built in or it's a stepping stone to uh, step this into your life. So that has to be um, the stepping stones. We have to use that will power strategically and understand how to do that. And then, of course, the last piece being that uh, for the long term permanent change we're looking for, it's not as it's not as much about doing differently as much as it is about thinking differently, learning to think differently. Right. So right. Um, when we change the physical habits and behaviors and, and rework the stepping stones after the challenge, then life happens. Stress, anxiety, Friday night, Saturday nights, vacations, family, in-laws, like just stuff, life and <laughs> So um, oftentimes it's when habit and behavior change, you can think of, we use um, habit is this automatic autopilot way of living and existing. And so uh, stress is a habit, anxiety is a habit, emotional habits, but we also have thought habits that really tank us, so to speak, all or nothing thinking, perfectionism thinking, uh, obsessive trying to control what we can't control, um, perfectionism. There's types of thought habits. The mind has 70,000 or so thoughts a day. And there's types of thought habits that when we fall into being trying to be perfect with everything or trying to go hard or go home or get really stressed at work, that's where the real, real work begins. So we use a lot of techniques in like self-directed neuroplasticity to really start rewiring the mind and understand if I start learning how to think differently, my behaviors will follow suit. In a very easy example, if I'm not as stressed out all day long, it's going to be way easier to reach for a vegetable if I'm not so stressed out. So it's really the thoughts that create the motions that create the behaviors. So we yes. start with the behaviors, but to create the permanence after the challenge, we've got to dig into the rest of the stuff too. Perfect. So a couple of points that I think were are awesome um, <clears throat> is, you know, the preparation part is key. And one of the things I'm 
always tell my patients is, you know, I'm recommending, so two things. One, I actually have what I call a three week jumpstart plan that is like the kind of baby steps getting you into, you know, before you dive into a 30 day paleo reset. And I tell patients all the time, if you need to take four weeks or six weeks to complete those steps, go for it. And by the way, the patients get to choose when they do their 30 day paleo reset. I never tell them it has to be tomorrow or next week. I always tell them, pick a time when you're ready and you can set yourself up for success. So some of the things that you talked about, like preparation, like kind of figuring out ahead of time, you know, what am I going to do for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And that's where I think both you and I are great about, you know, supplying um, patients with resources, like, you know, here's my favorite cookbooks and here's, you know, websites and blogs and recipes. And, you know, so that people can really start to kind of play around with it a little bit before they, you know, are, you know, crossing the go lines because what you want to avoid, which you just said was getting into that situation where you're like, Oh crap, I'm starving. I didn't bring my lunch. I'm unprepared. Then that, that leaves you more open to, you know, go to, to end up off plan. Yeah. Yeah. And the variety too. Like if you're just going to go into it and say, okay, for 30 days, I'm going to have chicken and vegetables, chicken and vegetables. Like that's going to get real boring, real fast. Totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I want to back up just a little bit and explain to everyone, because not everyone um, listening might be familiar with like what like, is the nuts and bolts of paleo, like what are the components of it? Um, so paleo, like I said, is an anti-inflammatory nutrient dense food plan, but a paleo plate, and I want to explain this because a lot of people I think, you know, get paleo wrong or they think, oh, I have to just eat, I'm eating bacon all day or I'm just eating red meat. It's like, could not be further from the truth. Um, yes, you know, uh, organic grass-fed beef is allowed on paleo, but it, you know, I've actually, I have vegetarians and vegans even, you know, following more of a a paleo construct. So a paleo plate looks like this. A paleo plate, half the plate is non-starchy vegetables of of some kind, half the plate, non-starchy veggies. Then there's a serving of lean protein of some kind, just like I mentioned, if it's, you know, organic grass-fed beef, great, organic free-range chicken, awesome, wild-caught salmon, awesome, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't matter what the protein source is, as long as it's well-sourced. So half the plate is non-starchy veggies. Then we have a serving of lean protein. Then we've got a serving of healthy fats. And so those are things like avocados, nuts and seeds, olive oil, coconut oil. And for the most part, it's not going to be over here as a separate thing. You're actually going to use that to flavor, you know, your your protein and your veggies and make things taste yummy. Um, And then there's a small serving of either starchy vegetables or a piece of medium fruit. So that is a paleo plate. It really is just real foods. So the list of things it avoids are, you know, processed and packaged for sure. It avoids sugar. It avoids grains and not just gluten. Gluten is a protein contained in wheat. Wheat is only one grain. So paleo eliminates grains of all kinds. And by the way, corn is a grain. That's a common one that people you know, get confused with a vegetable versus a grain. Um, so it takes out grains of all kinds. It takes out dairy of all kinds. It takes out legumes. And so legumes are the bean family. And by the way, peanuts are a legume. They're the only nut that's actually a legume. All the other nuts are truly nuts and totally paleo. Um, So it takes out grains, it takes out dairy, it takes out legumes, and it takes out soy. Um, And so those are the the most common triggers for symptoms. And another thing I want to make sure um, to be super clear about is uh, when I say symptoms, I don't just mean gut symptoms. Gut symptoms are super common. And we, yes, your gut is extremely important and crucial to your health, right? I just said earlier, 80% of the immune system is located inside the gut. But um, it, 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 you can have symptoms come out in any way, shape, or form. If it's gut, it tends to be easy. We tend to connect that a little bit better. But what if it's energy levels? What if it's not sleeping well? What if it's muscle aches or joint pains or headaches or skin rashes? It becomes a little hard to connect. And furthermore, your body's immune system can take up to three days to create a response to something. So if you're sitting here today and you're like, man, I'm exhausted or I have an awful headache or you have a symptom of some kind, um, there's no way to know right now if it's something you had for breakfast, the day before, the day before that, it becomes really, really difficult. So that is you know, really part of this you know, elimination um, of these food groups is, is why it's so beneficial is to figure out if those, you know, food groups are causing you symptoms. And then of course there are a group of patients, especially my autoimmune disease patients where they really need to live uh, within a paleo construct, you know, 80, 90% of the time. Um, But 
you know, just like, you know, Maya has kind of you know, beautifully said, uh, it's, it, it, I never ask anyone to be 100% perfect 100% of the time, because it's not going to happen. It's actually not healthy. It becomes stressful, right, Maya? Who, and who's going to follow that? And you end up in this all or nothing, Completely. you know, you Completely. know trap. Um, and so after the 30 days, there is, you know, a very targeted way to properly reintroduce, um, you know, foods that you're missing. Um, and it really is because I remember I said it could take up to three days for a symptom to occur. So you're adding in one serving of that food. So let's say you're like, I want to find out if I can have peanut butter. I miss, I miss peanut butter. And by the way, you only reintroduce the foods that you're really missing in your diet. So it's not to reintroduce everything you eliminated because by and large, I can tell you, I've done this, you know, hundreds of times now um, with patients and uh, their symptom scores, the, the amount of symptoms that they report, they're cut in half or two thirds on average when they follow through on the paleo reset. So people are really feeling great, but everyone, you know, we all have those kind of like one or two things that we're, you know, we really miss. But you only reintroduce things that you're gonna that you're gonna want to have in your diet on a regular basis. If it's gonna be part of your 20% off plan, like your you know three or so meals a week, you're not gonna need to reintroduce it because it's not gonna be part of your regular diet. So I hope that kind of makes sense to everyone. So let's say you you really are missing peanut butter, for example. So you reintroduce it one serving three times a day. So it's like I'm talking about a little serving, not just a tiny lick of peanut butter, like probably a tablespoon or more. Um, one serving three times a day and you do it three days in a row and you track how you feel. Because like I said, if it shows up in the gut, we all get that's obvious. But what if it turns out to be like muscle aches or joint pains or energy levels or you don't sleep as well, something more subtle. Um, that's why only one new food three times a day, three days in a row. And if someone has a response, they have a bad you know, response to something, then um, they stop you know, you don't have to finish the three days, you just stop eating it right away. And you wait until you're feeling perfectly good, as good as you did before you reintroduce that food to move on to the next one. Um, but you know, your example of alcohol, it's like, you're not going to do a, a, you know, three times a day, three <laughs> days in a row, reintroduction, right. <laughs> you know, take three days off from work and do nothing but that. But um, cause that's, <laughs> ideally in your health plan, it's only going to be an occasional, um, an occasional thing. So Maya, tell us, um, yeah. you know, as far as uh, getting uh, to the reintroduction strategy or at past the reintroductions and to, you know, mm. kind of maintaining within a paleo construct, like what are, um, what are some of the, um, give me a couple of kind of key points that people can, you know, um, employ, kind of start to think about and strategize about during their reset that they can, um, that'll help them be successful beyond the 30 days. Yeah. During the reset or after? Um, I would say after. Then they can after. start thinking about during and you yeah. know, so that they're successful they're su successful in maintaining 80% or more after. Yeah. How to be, how to be successful after. I mean, it's really, it's going to be um, the name of the game. Everyone always thinks that, uh, you know, when we go into something, some kind of a change, it's going to be so difficult and require so much time. And it's, it's not, it's not difficult. doesn't require a lot of time. The only thing that really truly does is that heightened level of awareness on a regular basis. Uh, most of us, when we're in this low grade state of stress as a habit or anxiety as a habit for most of our lives, we're so tapped out, tuned out um, to how it is that we actually feel uh, because stress is our normal habitual reaction in life. So the more that we can be aware uh, in every moment in terms of how it is that we're feeling, how the body's feeling, uh, awareness is certainly key for moving forward and creating, um, I mean, healthy habits for a lifetime. And then uh, really in, in, when you're aware like that, then you can start to recognize and understand some of the things that have always just thrown you off. Uh, whether that be the all, all or nothing thinking, perfectionism thinking, um, typically trying to control things in the future that are completely out of your control, producing the stress and anxiety. And so uh, it's those thought habits of the mind that when you're aware of um, your current situation, when you're aware of what it is that's throwing you off, most people think that like time to fall off the wagon. I failed again. See, I'm not strong enough or see, I don't have enough willpower. Total lie. Um, you're more than strong enough, more than capable enough. It's, it's less about um, starting and stopping and restarting, going harder and going home and more about um, uh, really opening that door and an opportunity to say, okay, okay, cool. I, I see what's tanked me all along. Now I have the opportunity to, um, to not do that anymore. And of course, uh, there's a balance. There's a fine balance between when you do the 30 day paleo reset, and this is the last thing I'll say, cause I want to keep you on time here is, um, 
that the, the healthy eating and the feeling good, I should say that the feeling good after the reset and the, the or any kickoff or anything like this, the, the feeling good becomes a habit. And so if you're eating or drinking something that doesn't make you feel good, you're going to notice that and you're going to uh, you're going to start desiring feeling good as a habit as opposed to feeling sick. And so um, it, at some point, what happens is uh, the desire to feel good becomes stronger than the desire to play out old patterns in, and habits of all or nothing thinking or sugar eating, which is cool uh, because it helps you get there faster. So as far as just practical little tips, of course, oh, I mentioned the awareness, uh, but food, uh, I see this every single time and it's going to be really important. Uh, your work plop you in from one lifestyle to another lifestyle just go online, go to Pinterest, go to our websites, find new recipes, try new things. Um, we want whole health in our diet. So we're going to have to make a little time in our life for that. Even if it's cooking one new paleo recipe a week, uh, right. just to get new stuff in your rotation. That's a great point. And so it doesn't, there's all kinds of amazing recipes out there, but it yeah. doesn't have to be fancy at all. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, sometimes, you know, it, we're both normal people, right? It's like you get home from work and it's like, okay, I have like today, like today I can tell you, I've got Brussels sprouts I made um, on Saturday that we're going to heat. That's going to be my vegetable and I'm going to make a different protein tonight. So it's kind of doing combinations of things, but I do find, you know, prepping and batch cooking, especially for those that have, you know, busier lifestyle, they really do help set you up for success. Um, the preparation is very, is definitely key and keeping it um, interesting. So I think a lot of people look at paleo um, or, or not even just paleo, but it's like any diet. They're like, oh yeah. Like they think of it as suffering. <laughs> um, and I definitely encourage people to think of it as, you know, uh, like a new pathway, like a new way of thinking, like if get excited about tasting new foods and new recipes, because I can tell you, um, cause you know, I've been living a paleo lifestyle for years now. And the cooking is so amazing. You can find great recipes out there. If you had a dinner party, I do this for Thanksgiving. I did just my, I did my third paleo Thanksgiving this past year. Nobody knows, nobody will know it's anything different. It's just really good food. Um, so that's just, you know, kind of a take home something to remember, um, of course, is it's, it's not about suffering. It's actually about, I think, exploration and, you know, new direction and finding new things. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're honed in on a thought um, that, oh my God, I can't have this. I can't have this. I can't have this. Uh, we have 60, 70,000 thoughts in our mind and thoughts create emotion. So if we're attached on one that says, look what I can't have and all of the lack that feels bad, you have the ability to choose other thoughts that feel better. And typically that's look at the life that is opening up to me. It is, it is truly a perspective shift that will change the game. That's awesome. Okay, great. Maya, thank you so much for joining right. Um, so I'm Dr. Emily Park with Arizona Wellness Medicine, and you can find out more about my practice um, on our website at dremilypark.com. And Maya, tell us how people can get in touch with you and, and potentially uh, work with you. Perfect. Absolutely. Yes. So of course, um, Nuaria and our Habit and Behavior Change Health Coaching Program, we're fully integrated into Arizona Wellness Medicine. So uh, the three-month package would be a great package to integrate with the 30-day um, Paleo Reset Challenge. And um, you can always just go to... Uh, our website. So it's Nuaria is N-U-U-A-R-I-A -A, um, and uh, forward slash pizza, nuaria.com forward slash pizza. You can schedule a completely complimentary um, consult. Uh, feel free. I'll, I'm sure we'll around this video, we'll put links to um, our website and the page. So feel free to reach out via email or um, phone call and we'll schedule that for you. And we can talk more about your individual goals, where you want to go and make sure that this fits into what you need. That's great. Awesome, Maya. Thank you yeah. so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. Have a great patient day. Take care. Bye.